It's Don here from the board. I just wanted to start in with a bit of an intro for this week's video and say that today is the 12th of November. So what that actually means is we're almost halfway through the month of November. Hump that but halfway through the month of November, which is halfway through the month of Movember. So as I've said in the previous video, I am doing Movember. This is my sixth year doing it, and I kind of have a bit of a, a mustache happening here. Of course, the running joke is when I tell people that I've been doing it for six years, they say, well, it's pretty good for six years of trying to grow a mustache. But you know what? That's just how my genetics are, and uh, I have to deal with that. Now, I want to say thank you to everyone who's donated so far, and of course, including myself, and we've raised $365 so far out of my $2,000 goal. Now, I don't expect that I'm going to hit $2,000 unless if all of you guys get involved. And of course, with over 2,000 subscribers to this YouTube channel, if every one of you guys donate $1, that is enough to hit that goal. But of course, that's probably not going to happen. But I'm going to say again and again and again, as each week rolls by towards the end of November, and I put in these intros before the videos, it is for an extremely good cause. It is for an extremely good cause for every male-born person you know, for testicular cancer, for prostate cancer, for men's mental health issues. So, father, brother, uncle, best mate, whoever it is that is in your life that matters to you and was born a male, this will benefit them in the long run. So please, if you'd like to get involved, Make a donation. It doesn't have to be to me. It can be to anybody else who is running a Movember campaign. You'll find links in the video description below, as well as a link to a random draw event that I will be running for a custom keyboard to say thank you for everyone checking out Movember and getting involved. So I'll catch you next week and we'll see if uh, my six year growth is any better. Thanks very much and uh, I hope you enjoy the video. It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today, it's been a couple of weeks since I've got these. I've finally got the time to do a review of the Halo True and the Halo Clear switches from Mastrop. Now, so a couple of weeks ago, our good friend Mitenole was very generous in sending me two boxes of these switches as part of some that he bought from the Mastrop group buys, the Mastrop drops, whatever you want to call them. And I finally got an opportunity to check them out. And of course, I've also got my switch tester here so we can run some comparisons, I suppose, in terms of just feel. The thing about my switch tester though is I've got a really shocking memory and I probably should have done something to note what I've actually got in my switch tester. So very quickly, that's just what's happening there with my switch tester. But I'm not sure exactly what I've got here in, in these two. Most of these others I can figure out or I do know what they are. But that one's a Varmillo top switch. So it's actually got a clear top that says Varmillo. And that one's a Kale switch. So I don't know, I don't think. I'm not 100% sure if any of these, if that's actually a Halo switch already or not. But we can get to that later. So let's crack open these and have a look. Now these are sealed with uh, a tab thing. So we've got one box which is a Hako Clear and we've also got another box which is the, sorry, Hako, what am I saying? It's the Halo Clear and the Halo True. Well, you know, Input Club, Master Up, practically the same switch just with some minor revisions in it thanks to the legal dispute issues that they've had and the production. But I think we're going to go with the, clue, the clear first. Clear first, true first. Let's go with the true, and then let's go with the clear. <sighs> it's just going to be one of those days, hey? One of those days. So, we'll put that aside. And let's get into it. Very exciting. I've never received switches in a box before. They always come loose in a bag. So having a box is, is so good. And here we go. Why? Wow. Gorgeous. So I may be right in that the switch in my switch tester is 
a actual Halo True. Hmm. Cool bananas. So it's nice that they have it in a box with these little tray rows. Though, of course, a couple of them on this side popped out, but that's kind of not unexpected considering it was shipped all the way to Australia and, and postage can be pretty rough. Uh, how do we get these? Does that whole tray lift? Okay, so that whole tray lifts. And I guess you just, yeah, just pull a rack of them out or something. But you know what? I'm just going to pop them back in and I'm just going to run my fingers across them. Ooh. Fancy. Now, is this the same switch? Uh, it says Kale. It's the same switch. Okay, so I already have one in my switch tester, which is fine, which is fine. I just don't even know where it came from. Miscellaneous random switches just appear in my collection. Uh -huh. Now, uh, I've probably talked about it previously, but uh, let's just go through it again anyway. It's a very sort of almost strawberry cream kind of color to these. It's a tactile and it's a weird tactile. Now pressing this before, I knew straight away that there was something about it in that the tactility is right at the top. And I've, I've talked about negative tactility before when I was playing with some of these other switches. And once again, it has that in that it's a two-stage bump. As soon as you press it, you've got a resistance and then it falls away and there's a stop point and then you can go further. So if we go onto the side profile here, so straight away there's a pressure on it, it falls away and then it stops there. Yep, it stops there. There's like a dip and then the spring weight increases when you bottom out. So I guess when you're typing on these, you really should only be traveling to that, that bottom point before you go all the way through which means you've got to be typing quite light, to be honest. The spring weight's quite heavy, but I'm just blowing straight through that, and, and I'm bottoming out straight away. So that's that's pretty cool. I do like the, the creation of these, these tray bits. That's actually really nifty. Keeps your pins safe, they don't get bent, they do get held in, and of course it's a classic kind of... Ah, okay. It's a classic kind of switch from kale but these have like an LED magnifier on them now I'm not going to be bothered pulling out the other rig for the magnifier Let's see if I can get this to focus there we go see there's like this plastic block there that is a LED magnifier it's designed to take light from your SMD LEDs and channel it through the housing into the top. There's no open cut slot in the actual housing that you see in a lot of them. So is it the same on this one? Yeah, it is. I hadn't even realized. So these these halos are designed to channel light through that light path. Now, of course, I'm just going to hold up to the microphone and you can have a hear of what it sounds like. It's not bad. They're, they're firm and you definitely can just rest your finger on it and it's not going to go anywhere. You can even lightly sort of tap it, but I don't know if it would actuate from a very light sort of tap without going a bit firmer on that. Well, that's, that's actually really, really cool. So that was the Halo Trues. And there's 110 in this, which will be more than plenty to build a 60% as part of the Switch library. Let's move on to the Halo Clear. Now, it's a tactile switch. Before I move on, it's a tactile switch. And to be honest, it's actually very similar to a Zeal. But the Zeal, I feel, has a greater 
noticeable bump because the zeal actually requires like a half mil of travel so the zeal goes it goes up and then down whereas the the halo true starts there and then it goes down so you've got a tactility for sure but it's reliant upon the collapse of that tactility whereas the the zeal itself is straight up telling you no, you've got to overcome this bump as opposed to starting up at the top of that peak to get past. So, yeah, that's that's just something to be aware of. Something to be aware of. Now, let's switch boxes and we've got the Halo Clears that we're going to be looking at here. And, ta-da! Radio. Now, I do have some clearish stemmed switches in here, but I just want to make sure that none of these are actually... So that, so this one here is actually a Gatoron clear. So I do not have a Halo clear at all, or a Hako clear. So I just wanted to be clear about that. <laughs> right. Wow. Are they both meant to be tag tiles? I let me let me do a quick search because uh because I'm confused. I thought one of them was actually gonna be a linear switch and one of them was gonna be a tactile switch. But um Ah, so they're actually both tactile switches. So what I've read here is that the clear is more tactile and the true is closer to linear but a subtle tactile. And that explains it all. So the negative bump that I was feeling on the trues versus these guys, which... Yeah, these, these feel more like uh, Cherry MX Greys to me, which is this one here. The Grey has a much more heavier spring in it, but it has a very distinct peak, whereas the peak on these, these clears, these Halo clears, is once again, it's still a negative feel, but it's a firmer spring and sensation to it compared to that. Yeah, so these are definitely a heavier spring, and I would say comparatively, they are much closer to a a MX Gray. Now I don't actually have an MX Clear. I don't have an MX Clear, so I can't compare it to an MX Clear. But I've heard they're actually pretty solid as well. So let's pull one of these out of the tray. trays will let me. There we go. And let's listen to that as well. We'll just wait for the truck to go past. That one's got some something stuck to it. There we go. Bit of plastic. Alright, so here is the Halo Clear. I'm gonna say it sounds very similar, but for for tactile and linear switches, you kind of expect that. With clickies, it's a little bit different because the different click mechanism and profile will probably affect the way that it actually sounds. Whereas with these, it's less of an issue. But uh, this is actually really, really firm. This is really, really firm. Much firmer than the greens. I'm going to say these are a comparable firmness to navies, to box navies.
Yeah, they're, they're, they're very comparable to box navies. So, I don't know why I just put that back because I really should be putting one of these into whoop, into my Switch collection. So, let's uh, put it down there and snap it in. There we go. So, another one into my fledgling Switch collection. I think between the two of them, I actually prefer the clears. I prefer the clears because it's firmer and that, that tactility is more pronounced even though it is a negative tactility. There's more of a tactile response coming back up which is indicating that it's getting past that hump to return to its natural sort of state. But of course when you type you're not really going to feel that because you're not going to be in contact with it since you've hit it and your fingers are probably moving on. So yeah. So there you go. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Would I actually build a board and use these in it? I would actually say if I was after a quiet board, if I was after something that was going to be, you know, in an office environment and I knew that I would get in trouble for using clickies because I love my clickies, then I would actually consider giving these a go. Definitely. Definitely. Cool. Well, that's it for this review. Nice and simple. They both have neg negative tactility. They're quiet in terms of just how they feel. They're very smooth. I wouldn't expect them to be any other way. Like you can feel a little bit of friction on them, but as far as OEM switches go that haven't been lubed, that's not really surprising. There's a little bit of wear sound on those that you don't get on the Zeals. And actually just feeling the the Gatorons, the Gatoron switches are actually smoother than these. Yeah, the Gatoron switches are much smoother than than both the clear and the trues in the friction. So if you want something that's going to be really smooth and have that tactility in it, then I'm going to say you probably want to add a bit of lube to these as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It's, it's just amazing the generosity that you've been giving us on this uh, this channel, Mitonale, I really appreciate it. I hope that my comments here have given you an additional kind of thought and process on what these switches are like. And of course, you're going to have your own opinions with using these yourself. But if I had to pick between the two, then I would probably go with the clears. And I'm kind of lazy to add lube, so it doesn't really bother me about having that little bit of friction to it. But if you do like super, super smooth switches, then you definitely will have to lube them regardless if you do it the lazy way or if you open them up and lube them properly. So that is pretty much a wrap. And uh, thank you, of course, everyone for checking out this review. Please hit that like button. Please hit that share button. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. What I've also been told recently, thanks to YouTube, is uh, you guys should actually hit that bell button, which is the notification button, so that you guys get notifications on when our next videos and releases happen as well. Otherwise, it just doesn't turn up on your feed compared to the buttons, compared to the channels that you subscribe to where you have hit that bell button as well. Okay. So, thanks for checking out the video, and until next time, happy clacking.